Hello, this is Pastor Dave Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church. Welcome once again. This is Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. Well, it is Christmas time. We're in the, the midst of the Christmas season, and this is Christmas weekend for us. It's the weekend before Christmas, and uh, we're excited because we're having a special service this Sunday in celebration of the Christ, our Savior, having come into this world. You know, many people uh, mention, complain, comment that we don't know the exact date uh, or day that Jesus was born. We don't even know the exact year, in all honesty. You know, we don't have an exact time. And, and that's okay. It's not important that we celebrate it on the right day. What's important is that we stop and have a celebration, that we have a time that we were ordained to remember Jesus Christ. And I know there are a lot of other things that go on. There are a lot of things people complain about, the connection to pagan, other pagan events, things like that. Listen, let pagans do what pagans are going to do, but that doesn't stop us from doing what we're going to do. The devil will always try and override what we do for Christ with other things. We can't let that stop us from doing what we need to do for Christ. And so we want to celebrate this great gift of, of God's to us, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we're going to do it today, or this weekend, on Sunday. Uh, before Christmas. So come and join us for this weekend on Sunday morning, our 11.30 a.m. service here in the sanctuary at 12.30 Long Pond Road. We're going to have a great, great service and celebration. You are invited to come and join us. We're looking forward to it. going to sing, have some worship, great power of God in here, special ministry. It's going to be a great time and a great opportunity to stop and remember Jesus Christ. Join us here along with all of our other services that will be taking place. Your core is invited to join us on Sundays and on Wednesdays. Wednesdays, our Wednesday Bible study takes place here at 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights in the classrooms. And we also have prayer that goes on here on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. and Saturdays at 8 a.m. Those are call-in prayers. If you can't get to the church on Wednesday, uh, you can call in on either day, Wednesday or Saturday, and be a part of a powerful, powerful time of prayer. So come and join us in the services, especially this weekend as we celebrate Jesus Christ on this Sunday. We want you to be a part of it. Come and join us. And by the way, right around the corner, the New Year is coming. We will have a special New Year's Eve service as well here at the church. So get ready to join us. It's a Thursday night, the 31st, and we're going to have a great, great, great time. So we'd love to have you come and join us in any of these services. Let me take you now to the Word of God. Let me take you something that I believe is going to bless you uh, where as we preparing now for Christmas. I want to bring us a very special message from uh, in the past. It's called The Birth of a King. It is the story of Jesus Christ and the King that came and sacrificed himself to give himself for you and me. God bless you. I pray that this will bless you and I hope we will see you. Bring your family. Come by yourself. We'd love to have you here in service with us this weekend. God bless you. Have a good one. It was a king, in fact, that gave his life for yours. It was a king that saw what we needed to go through and sacrificed himself. Not just another commoner, not just another volunteer that stood up, but somebody who had power and somebody who had authority and somebody who governed over all things rose up, amen, and surrendered himself for you. It was the king Christ that came and surrendered himself and lived his life humbly before us. He walked as one of us, a king yet in incognito, if you will, being just as common, being just as average as any one of us. He sacrificed and constrained his own power and authority in order to be in our midst as one of us. The Bible tells us, amen, that he wanted to be able to relate with what we've gone through. And so in Hebrews, we hear the words that describe him as a high priest that has been touched by all the infirmities and the things and the situations that we've gone through, yet without sin in his life. He knows what it is to be hurt. He knows what it is to be sorrowful. He knows what it is to have difficulties. He knows what it is to go through problems, to have tests and trials, to be tempted, to go without having everything that you need. He knows every situation that we go through. And this king came and allowed himself to live in the poverty and in the commonness of mankind just so he'd be able to relate with us and be one of us and ultimately die as one of us. Think about a king that has all power in his hands that can speak the word at any time it comes to be. Think about someone who controls all the earth. We saw evidence of his power and authority when he spoke to the winds and the waves and just said, peace be still, and they had to obey him. 
We see evidence of his power when every demon that, recognized, that saw him recognized him and bowed themselves, prostrated themselves before him. Evidence of things that we could not see or understand of him, but all nature, all creation knew exactly who he was. But this king humbled himself, constrained himself, and lived amongst us as a simple child. Not only did he live that way, but he was born that way. Born, amen, in, into the meagerness of a family that had nothing of its own. and Into a family where he was born in a stable. He lied in, 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 in the place where animals ate as being his crib. He didn't have many rich things to wear. He didn't have royalty. Most kings, most people uh, of clout today have a certain expectation when you, have, when you live in a certain position, you expect certain things. You expect to be treated a certain way. You expect people to honor you for who, who you are and recognize you. You expect uh, to have things a little bit better than perhaps the average person would be. You expect to live in certain types of quarters and eat certain types of foods, and that becomes your norm. But Jesus sacrificed all the things of heaven for the simplest things of earth. This king came. But first, before he was king and an authority over the earth, he had a mission to complete, and that mission was to die as one of us. Oh, he's going to return in his kingship, but he lived for 33 and a half years as a simple servant man on the earth. I want you to see a couple of things in the scripture that point to his coming and what he became. In the book of Isaiah, you can turn with me if you'd like. I want to throw you, show you three passages of scripture. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, first of all, see the prophecy, the promise of what was to come. In Isaiah, chapter 9, and verse 6, prophecy comes to us through Isaiah of he who was to come. And he's speaking at that particular time to the children of Israel at a time when they were destitute. They were being overwhelmed by their enemies. They were being overcome, and they were in battle and war. And then Isaiah begins to speak of peace and promise and deliverance from the things that we're going through. In verse 6 he says, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase, verse 7, of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. Isaiah promised, he spoke of promise of this king that was going to come. As they were looking at the time that they were in, living in, and the destitution of that time, and all the problems, and the attacks, and the oppression, he gave them a promise of a king that was going to come. A child would be born, a son would be given, and he says, the government shall be upon his shoulders. In other words, this king, when his government is established, all other governments would be subject to to him. This is the promise of the king that was to come. His royal titles included wonderful and counselor and mighty God and everlasting father and prince of peace. This was the king of kings that was promised to come. And so Isaiah saw this vision, this image of him and who he was to be. And the image that he saw was actually the image of the second coming of Christ in this particular circumstance. Because it was the image of whom Christ will be when he returns back to us again. Nevertheless, it's the same Christ. This King of kings and Lord of lords that the Bible tells us now is coming back, even for a second time. And Revelation ex exposes to us of a time in which he will come in the midst of the destitution of this earth. And he will come and he will reign, the Bible says, for us a thousand years. He will kill, amen, all those and destroy those who are enemies, amen, to God. And he will raise up, amen, his government upon this earth. And first for a thousand years and then forever with a new heaven and a new earth. But it was that same king and that same Lord that before fulfilling this assignment came to fulfill a first one. And that was to live amongst us. To humble himself amongst us. To be as one of us. It was a king 
that came and surrendered his robes and surrendered his authority and surrendered his rightful place just to be known amongst us, amen, as one that could die in our place. You see, a king could not die, amen, in our place on the cross. It took somebody who represented the us of who we are, the humanity of who we are that had gone through, that had endured. He couldn't be in a place where he could just speak and cause evil to flee. He had to resist evil just like you and just like me. He had to live a life and show and demonstrate a life without sin on the earth. He had to come from the fruit, the loins of someone who was without sin. That's why he had to come as a result of the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit in Mary so that he had a pure bloodline. Yet he had rights to the kingship that came forth from the promise of the seeds of David that the kingdom would never ever leave his lineage. He fits every line and every principle and every point and every piece of the jigsaw puzzle that comes together to the identity of who the Messiah would be. And he comes forth as Lord and King, but yet subject and servant willing to die for us. The promise comes that he would come, that he would be born, and that he would rule forever. In the book of Luke, we see the beginnings of the fulfillment of that promise in Luke chapter 1, verse 26, where God sends a message by his servant angel, Gabriel, to Mary and speaks promise to her of the blessing that was about to come. The Bible says in Luke chapter 1, verse 26, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph in the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. We saw the prophecy of us, the promise of his coming. And now we see the beginnings of the fulfillment. As now, Jesus, God declares the word to Mary that it's time. The promise that had existed for so many years, for so many centuries, for so many generations. The promise that had been committed to by God, even at the very beginning, at the time of Adam and Eve. And the, Eve the promise that the seed of the woman would come. The promise that a son would be born is now about to come to pass. And Mary, you are the one that God has chosen to fulfill his promise to the world. The promise of age, ages. The promise that had been waited for by so many. The promise that was, was established and signed and, and confirmed through the shedding of blood of animals. All the way from the beginning of Passover, the blood that was shed, the promise that had not been completed but co-signed by the blood of animals, that yet someone was to come, a Messiah was to come, who's when he came and his blood was shed, it would cover the sins of the world, past, present, and future. The promise was about to be. I love how he shares to her, thou have been highly favored. You've been selected, you've been chosen, you've been favored by God. Thank God for his favor to come into her life because you are about to experience in your life something great, something nobody else has ever experienced. Through you, God is about to send the son of the highest, the son of God is about to come forth in you. Yes, you may have heard about it. People have talked about it. It's been questioned, rumored. There have been things have suggested about it, but it's about to become to pass right now through you. You are highly favored. He says, the Lord's going to give unto you the throne of his father, David. Even though he's my child, he comes down the lineage of David. And God always keeps his promises. And he will reign forever. You know, 
Now, one thing I want you to see about this moment, although it seems exciting, it feels intense, it feels like something great's about to happen. Sometimes God gives us a word and we get really excited about it because it looks like God is about to do something great. But I want you to understand that as she's, he's giving her this word of promise and how favored she is and how blessed she is, understand that God is about to turn her life upside down. Oh, Lord, if she only knew. Sometimes when God gives us a promise, if you only knew what God was about to do in your life, amen, the blessing of God was about to come, but what she was about to experience wasn't about to feel like a blessing. Because the circumstances that she found herself in was the circumstance of a young lady who had been promised to be married to somebody, but all of a sudden she shows up pregnant. She shows up and comes back on the scene, amen, from visiting Elizabeth, and she's got a little bit of a bump in front of her. And, and her husband, who was promised to be her husband, who hadn't been with her yet, amen, must have had some questions. Not only that, but you know how neighbors can be? You know how those hanging around you can be? Those in the church can be when they see you coming in and, hmm, something don't look right here. How much hiding can you do and how long can you hide it when all of a sudden and when you start counting up the days, wait a minute, they didn't get married until this day and she was this and the sun came, showed up here and something don't, something don't seem right, something don't add up right. You know there was some talking that was going on in the neighborhood. Y'all heard about Mary, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what Joseph got to say about it. Joseph's been pretty quiet. He hasn't really said anything. And, but there, isn't that wedding date still, isn't it still coming up? It just looked like she's pregnant now. Seem to be gaining a little weight there. Che cheeks getting a little wide. Got that rosiness on her. What's going on with that? Turn her life upside down because in the midst of her promise, all of a sudden she became a target. Somebody says, you know what? In our Bible, we call that adultery. I don't know who it was that she was with, but she was with somebody she shouldn't have been with. Now she's carrying some illegitimate child. Somebody begin to ask some questions. All of a sudden, friends start disappearing. Sometimes when God gets ready to bless you, friends can start disappearing. Those who promised to have your back, those who were on your side, those that were standing with you, when God gets ready to bless you, sometimes some things have to clear out of your life. Sometimes he allows people to see things, and when they look on you, they don't see the blessing in you. They see a problem with you. When God is working something in your behalf, when God is changing your life, when God is turning things around, sometimes they don't see it as a blessing. They see it as something that's going on that's not right. And all those who loved her and all those who cared about her, I imagine even her own family. Can you imagine her own mother and father don't even know what to say? Our daughter is out there and she done done something and now we look bad in front of everybody. All of our neighbors are talking about us. All the family is talking about us. Everybody, amen, has got some issues with what's going on. And standing alone, sometimes when you get blessed, you end up standing all by yourself. God began to turn her whole life upside down. At some point there, I'm sure she thought her life was going to be kind of kind of nice and normal. She has a nice man, young man that she's been espoused to, and he's a hard worker, and you know, he's well known in the community, and I'm just going to be his, his bride, and we're going to get together and love with each other, and have many babies, and just life is going to be a wonderful thing. And God took her simple plans and turned it upside down. Oh, it may seem from the Bible that they had to leave because of the circumstances going on with Herod, but understand, they had to leave either way because they weren't living where they were living with the situation that was going on. God had to move them out of where they were because if he hadn't moved them, people were not ready to understand and accept what was going on in their life. Amen. God had to clear some things out before they could come back, amen, to Nazareth. So in the midst of all these things, we're expecting something good from God. The challenges began to come up and arise on them. But nevertheless, I believe if Mary were here today to talk about it, she would tell you it was worth it all. All the troubles, all the thing, things, all the lies, all the threatenings, all the rumors, all the people talking behind her back, all the false friends that stepped away. She had to go through some things. 
But as she went through it all and saw the son that God gave her and saw what he came out to be, and the Bible said her and Joseph pondered some things in their heart that they saw the situation. I imagine she'll tell you it may, it may have been tough while she was going through. But in the end, it was worth it all. I want you to understand today some of the things you may go through. It may be a little tough sometimes going through. You can reach out and tell somebody it's going to be worth it all. Go on, say it's going to be worth it all. Finally, in the book of Matthew, chapter 2, we find here now the revelation. We saw a prophecy of it. We see it fulfilled. But now comes revelation, revelation in Matthew, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born? King of the Jews. For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. These three wise men come from the east. Some refer to them as being kings, three kings or three wise men. We believe in their own right they were kings or had lordship. They had authority. These were men of power. These were men that had uh, people subject to them. They were higher class men. They were studious. They were students and research, amen, in all types of texts and all types of backgrounds. And in the midst of all the things that they studied and researched, they studied the word of, of God, the Torah, and they studied the word that had been separate, had been, had been preserved by various prophets all the way in the east, not even in Jerusalem. Somewhere they suggest possibly in India. These men were studying scriptures and studying different references and trying to develop understanding. They were men of wisdom and they were searching for wisdom and understanding of the things of the world when as they were studying they came across different scriptures and different things that were from the Jewish background which talked about a king that was to come. They probably saw scriptures like what we saw in Isaiah chapter 9 promised a son that was going to be born, a king that was going to be delivered, that was going to rise up. And somewhere in there they saw the prophecy of a star as well that was going to shine and represent his coming. They saw prophecies of Bethlehem. And as they watched for these things, someone must have noticed a star because they were also more likely astrologists that studied the stars. And in the midst of their studying, they saw the star begin to shine out brightly different and unique from the rest of the stars. They begin to put some things together and add some things and begin to wonder. I wonder if this is the star that we've read so much about. So they began to gather their goods together and they began to gather the things that they had and so for a long journey. And more, by, more than likely they were not on their own. More than likely they had servants that came with them and followed with them and helped bring things and carry the load with them as they traveled from east to west following this star. And clearly they had expectation because they brought with them gifts. Things that weren't simply just for anyone and things that weren't simply just for a child, but things that represented a king. They brought from among their best and they traveled following this star until they finally came to the area of Bethlehem in Jerusalem. And they asked the question, where is this king that's been born, the king of the Jews? We saw a star shining up and we followed it and it's brought us to this area. And we believe it represents a king that's been born here. We don't understand everything about it, but we perceive that there's greatness to be found. And so they followed the star as it brought to them the identity of a king, a child that was born. Perhaps not exactly what they expected. They didn't find him in the most lavish of circumstances. In fact, they went to King Herod looking in the kingship. They figured if it's a king, he should be born in the castle. But the star wasn't settled over the castle. They figured, well, you know, this is their area, this is their government. Surely you're going to know about your king being born. But they didn't know anything about it. And so they pursued the star until it brought them over the top of Bethlehem and over the top of Mary and Joseph in this one little stable as they began to look around for children. I can imagine, you know, they first started house to house. You know, any, any children here? It can't be over there. It, it, you know, is it, uh, there's an inn right there. Maybe it's just a, it's a little off. How, this close enough. Is any, any children, no children there either. House, 
in, well, there's nobody, no children here, but, you know, back behind us in the stable, I hear that they're having a child back there. Really? And they go in the back, in the deep, behind where everybody else is, and everybody else would think something special is. They went back to where the animals feed, where nobody was watching and nobody cared. And here they found this one little child directly underneath the star. And they knew what it meant. Sometimes things don't look like what we expect them to be. Sometimes we think and expect one thing, and what we get is something entirely different than what we thought we were going to see. But thank God that they had the wisdom enough to not be hindered by what they saw, but to trust what God said. Mm -hmm.